Hi everyone, it's Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in beautiful Billings, Montana. Today I'm going to tie you a beautiful Golden Stone Fly Nymph. This is Charlie Craven's CDC Golden Stone. It actually is the cover photo on his book entitled Nymphs. It's not a particularly difficult fly to tie. There are a lot of different materials to it and we have a couple of hackle collars. We have one hackle collar of CDC and another hackle collar of a new product that we've been carrying here called Brahma Hen that I'm going to show you. So we're going to start off with a 2X long. This is a 52-62 Tiemco. You can tie these in sizes from 8 to 14. I'm tying this in a size 8 for you so you can see what I'm doing. So we have a, a gold bead on here. This is a 530 seconds, which is appropriate for this hook size. Of course, you can use tungsten if you prefer for additional weight. I'm just going to add some O2O lead wire to this for additional weight. I can get it off. Okay. And I'm going to put oh, 12 to 15 turns on here. I like to start over the point of the hook and wrap my turns as closely as I can. It just helps to collate them a little easier. This is where your tungsten carbide scissors come in awfully handy when you're cutting wire. And then we'll just get this gathered up nice and tight. Get our tag ends pushed down and then push it up against the bead. Now you can use a tan or a yellow thread. I'm using an 80 yellow vivas. And the first thing we want to do is build a nice tapered dam at the back of our lead wraps. It just makes the entire transition of the abdomen so much easier and smoother. We'll go ahead and wrap through our lead wraps and back. And then we'll end here at the end of the hook shank. Now for the tail, I'm using yellow dyed pheasant and for this size fly, I'm going to take off about a dozen fibers. Get them out straight from the, the quill, get the tips even and just pull them straight down off. And we want our tail to be about half a hook shank length. So we'll measure this like so. Angle them slightly towards your side of the hook. Put one soft turn and then you bring your next turn up in front of that nice and tight. And that'll bring those fibers up to the top. Then we're going to over wrap these over the back of our lead and slightly forward just to keep that taper nice and smooth. And then we'll cut off the butt ends. All right, at this point, our ribbing is going to be 3X monofilament tippet. So any old tippet that you have, don't throw it away, save it for fly tying. And we're going to tie it in on the far side of the hook since we're going to be doing a conventional wrap. Now tippet is very slick, so make sure that you use very tight thread wraps to get this mounted down all the way to the butt of the tails. And then we're going to bring our thread back up to about the 70% 70, 70 point. Our flashback is going to be large size Opal Mirage tinsel. I would advise you once you buy this tinsel to put a rubber band on it. You do not want to put it underneath the end cap or you will be throwing an awful lot of tinsel away. This way I can simply unwrap what I need. And we'll tie this down on the top of the hook shank right where our thread is hanging. Keep it on top of the hook shank as you wrap back over it 
toward the butt of your tail and make sure you're all the way down at the butt end of the tail. Bring your thread back forward a couple of wraps. For the dubbing, I'm using SLF Golden Stone dubbing. It's wonderful dubbing to work with. We carry it here in the shop. And we'll start dubbing here. I always bring my thread forward because it's just about impossible to get a tight dubbing all the way up to the hook shank. So I give myself a bit of a running start here so I can start my dub actually at the tail. Bring that back and as you see then my dubbing starts right at the tail. We want to start off with a fairly slim body and allow it to taper as we go forward. Continue to wrap and touching turns and add dubbing as we need it. I really like the SLF dubbing. It's a good combination of natural fibers and synthetic fibers and it's very, very easy to dub. So we'll allow our thorax to thicken just a little bit as we come forward. And we're going to dub to about there, about a bead length behind the bead. Now we'll bring our flashback material over the back, keep it on top of the hook shank. Remember that thread torque will want to carry it to the other side. Put in three good strong wraps. Do not cut your, your flash at this time. As you wrap your rib over it, it will tend to pull that flash back a little bit. And if you've cut off the tag end, it's got no place to pull back and you'll end up with a loose flashback. Now we're simply going to take our tippet, wind it forward, ensuring that we keep our flashback on top of the hook. Really pull this tippet down to embed it into the dubbing. And then once you get to the tie-off point, remember this is very slick material. So give it several very tight wraps. Or you'll have it come unwound on you. Now we can cut off our flashback material and remove our rib. Okay, now we're going to bring our thread back and we're going to dub just a bit of a collar here. Anytime you're tying in soft hackles, it's important that you have a thorax to push these hackles back against to make them flare out. We don't need a lot here. Just enough to form this collar. Now, the original pattern actually calls for tying in the tip of a CDC feather and wrapping it like you would soft hackle. Now, Charlie must have access to a much better a quality of CDC than I do, but I find that the stems are so thick that it's difficult to wrap and it's very bulky. So what I'm do going to do instead, I'm going to make a dubbing loop. I'm simply going to take two and I'm using a golden olive, which I think is very appropriate for this fly. Just going to preen these hackles out a little bit. And then I'm going to use a clip one of the magic clips. And clip it fairly close to the quill, but leave some room here, like so, so that we can attach it in our dubbing loop. And then you can simply cut the CDC off right next to the quill. So right now we have this. Now to make a dubbing loop, all you need to do, whatever your favorite dubbing twister is, attach your thread, make sure that it's right where you have the thread hanging, make a couple of wraps, 
And although I've never seen this in print, I always wrap my thread twice around the dubbing loop to close off the top end. If you don't do that, your dubbing loop will never close all the way to the top. So it's important that you do that little step. Now we'll separate our two strands of thread and simply slide in our CDC up as close to the hook as we can. Allow it to snap close and just give it a couple of twirls. We don't have to make this really tight. Just enough to keep it on the thread. And then we'll get our hackle pliers and remove this from the dubbing twister. And we're just going to make two wraps. As you wrap, whoops, as you wrap, sweep these fibers back. I just lost. and then tie off your dubbing loop. The CDC has wonderful natural properties that not only entrain air bubbles but they have excellent movement under the water. Now for the final collar I'm using a new product that we've been getting in. It's from Whiting. It's Brahma Hen. It's beautiful material. It's very nice and webby and the feathers come in all lengths. We want to take a feather where we'll have about one and a half hook gaps of fiber. And if you tie many streamers, you'll find that on these necks you also have some very, very nice long hackles in the rear. So it's really a nice all-purpose type of hackle. We're going to cut off the very base end there. And instead of stripping the fibers, I'm going to cut a few off and leave just a little bit sticking from the quill. This gives me some tie down room. We're going to tie it in butt first, right behind the bead, with a couple of turns going back towards the hook, and then trim off that little bit of butt. You do not need any more than about two wraps on this. Make sure you have the center stem in your hackle pliers when you wrap. It helps tremendously if you fold these fibers back. And I'm not as good at it as I wished I was. It helps to wrap it. We're going to take one wrap. Pinch these fibers back. And a second wrap. Tie off the butt end with a nice firm wrap. Bring your thread forward to immediately behind the bead. And then just reach in with your scissors point and nip that off. Now to sweep those hackles back, all we're going to do is add just a little bit more dubbing. We don't need but about a turn's worth, so it's about an inch or so of dubbing is all we need here. And then we'll sweep these hackles back with our fingers and right behind the bead make a couple of wraps with our dub thread. And then finally we whip finish. Make sure with your whip finish you pull back snugly. You'll feel that thread pop until it gets behind the bead and firmly on the hook shank itself. And then we'll do one more and again Pull it firmly back. That helps it to disappear underneath that collar. There you have it, folks. CDC Golden Stone. It's a beautiful, beautiful Golden Stone pattern. It's not difficult to tie. And like I said earlier, you can tie these all the way down to size 14. So, Charlie, if you're watching, thanks for the pattern. It's a beautiful one. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. And we'll see you next time, folks.